What's up? I'm Vin, and I'm going to solve this geometry challenge question. And this question came from a high school math competition. So we have inside a square with side length one, a quarter circle is drawn with its center in the top left corner, and the circle passes through the top right and bottom left corners. And then we have a half circle is drawn using the right side of the square as its diameter. So the center is over here, and it's going to swing out like this. And then we have a smaller circle is placed inside the square, and this circle is tangent to the quarter circle, it's tangent to the half circle, and it's also tangent to the bottom edge of the square. And our goal is to find the radius of the smaller circle. First, I'm going to draw in a line segment going from this corner over to the center of the red circle. So I'm just going to draw this in like this. And what we could say is the side length of the square is 1. So that tells us that the radius of the circle, the quarter circle drawn in blue, is equal to 1. Because notice that it goes from here to here like this, equal to the side length of the square, and then it swings this way like this. So I'm going to call this segment over here, I'm going to put a 1, just to say how long it is. And then the distance from the center here to the red circle, the outside here on the circumference, we're going to call R. Okay, we're just going to say the unknown radius, we're just going to call that R. And I'll just make it a little bit neater. So we're solving for R in this question. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another line segment going like this, going across. And... What we could say is the distance from here to here. For now, I'm just going to call that x. But one thing to notice, they said that the red circle is tangent to the blue quarter circle, to the purple half circle, and also to the bottom edge of the square. So that means if I drop down a little line like this, going this way, this I could also call r, which will tell us that the distance from here to here is also r. So if I want to label this leg of this right triangle that I just grew, that I just drew in green, I could call this segment here 1 minus r. Okay, so this over here I'm going to call 1 minus r. So now I have enough stuff here to set up one equation. I'm going to draw that, that, uh, that green right triangle off to the side just so we could clearly see the dimensions. And the hypotenuse is 1 plus r. And this vertical leg over here is 1 minus r. And for now, I'm just calling this, this part over here x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an equation relating these three. I'm using Pythagorean theorem. We're going to have x squared plus 1 minus r squared. And this we're going to say is equal to 1 plus r squared. And now we could just expand this. So we have x squared plus, when I expand this, I'm doing 1 minus r times 1 minus r. So I'm going 1 minus r times 1 minus r. So I have 1 times 1 is 1. I have 1 times minus r is minus r. But then I have negative r times 1 is another minus r. So I have minus 2r in the middle. And then I have plus r squared at the end. So that's how we're expanding this binomial squared. And I'm going to do something very similar for the right side. So if we focus on the right side over here, we're going to have 1. But this time we're going to have plus 2r in the middle and then plus r squared. And some things I noticed right away, 1 minus 1 just cancels out nicely. And then we could also say that r squared and r squared are going to cancel out. So now we could write the leftovers. We're going to have x squared minus 2r is equal to 2r. And now I'm just going to add 2r to both sides. So we just add the 2r to both sides. And this is going to give us, we're going to have x squared equals 4r which we could take the square root of both sides. And this tells us that x is equal to, I could say the square root of 4 is 2, and then I have square root of r. So now let's move on to the half circle. So I'm going to draw in the center over here. And since the square has side length 1, each of these is going to be equal to a half. So this one up here, this distance, I could say is 1 half. And then I'm going to draw in a few more lines. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to draw in this line segment over here, and then I'm going to draw this across and draw in this line segment. So the bottom little space over here is still equal to r. And now this leg over here, we could say is 1 half minus r, because the distance from here to the middle is a half, and the same here, but I'm just subtracting off that little piece r over here. And now for this part, what we could say is the entire side length is equal to 1. So I could label this leg over here 1 minus x, because we named this one over here x. So that one I could just call 1 minus x. So I'm going to draw the right triangle off to the side here so it's clear like what's happening here. And we could start to label this. This is 1 half minus r. Over here, the distance from the center to this part of the circle, 
I could say is equal to a half because they told us the diameter goes along the side length here. So the radius of this circle is equal to a half. And notice that when the half circle is drawn like this, it's going in this direction here and it's extending to this part of the hypotenuse. So over here, I could say the radius is a half and then that little extra piece here is equal to R. So the hypotenuse, I'm gonna call one half plus R. Very similar to how we labeled the triangle in green over here. So now the bottom leg is one minus X and I could call it one minus X, but notice that we solved for X a moment ago and X was equal to two square root R. So I could say one minus two square root R. And now what we could do is we could use Pythagorean theorem again, but now we're gonna have an equation here all in terms of R and this should help us solve for R. So now we're gonna set this up. We have one half minus R squared plus we're gonna have one minus two square root of R squared is equal to, we have one half plus R squared. So now let's work this out. When we do one half minus R squared, we have a half times a half is a fourth. And then we're gonna have a minus one half R minus another half R. And if I do minus a half minus a half, that's minus one. And then I have the R attached, but then minus R times minus R is plus R squared. And now I could expand this one. I'm gonna have plus one and then I'm gonna have a minus two radical R minus another two radical R gives us a minus four radical R. And then when I square this term, I'm gonna have a positive four R. And now on the right side, we have a half times a half is a fourth. And then we have one half R plus one half R is R. And then we get an extra R squared at the end. So now looking on the left side and right side, I'll just chop off some common terms here. So we have R squared on both sides. We have, let's see, we have one fourth on both sides we could cancel out. And is there a matching R term? Not at this point. So now I'm just gonna move this over and combine like terms. So I'll combine like terms first. We have minus R plus four R is three R. And then we have plus one and we have minus four square root of R. And this is all equal to R. So now we could just subtract R on both sides and we're gonna have on the left side, three R minus one R is two R. And then I'm gonna write this term next, the minus four square root R. And then we have plus one is equal to zero. And from here, what we could do is I'm going to make a substitution. I'm gonna say U is equal to square root R. And then that way U squared, I could say is equal to R. So I could rewrite this now as two U squared minus four times U and then plus one. So now this appears to be quadratic in its nature. It's not a true quadratic equation before because of the square root but we could solve it much like we solve a quadratic when we make this substitution here. So now I'm gonna use the quadratic formula and we're gonna have u equals, and we're gonna have, um, just remember the quadratic formula. In general, we have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. So I'm using this formula. I'm gonna have u equals opposite of the b term is four. And then I have plus or minus the square root of, when I square the B term, I get 16, minus four times two times one, so that's the A and C term. We're multiplying by four, and then we're all over two times A, so we're all over two times two. And then this gives us four plus or minus, that's gonna give us 16 minus eight is eight. So we have four plus or minus eight all over four, and then I could simplify this radical, we have four plus or minus, this is radical four, radical two, so that would give me two radical two like this. And then we're over four. So now I could do four divided by four is one. And then I have plus or minus two over four is a half, or I could just say radical two over two like this. But one thing to be mindful of, u is equal to square root r. So when I solved for u, what I really solved for was square root r is equal to, we could say two things, one plus square root of two over two, or we could say square root r equals one minus square root two over two. But one thing to be mindful of, the original question here, notice that the square had a side length of one. So this little circle over here, the radius cannot be bigger than one because then this little circle would exit the square. It has to be inscribed in this little space over here. So just think about this logically. The square root of R can't be more than one. So this one here, we're gonna reject and we're gonna focus all of our attention on this. So now we could solve this one over here for R. We're gonna square both sides and I'm just gonna go ahead and expand the right side. I'm gonna show the product of the two binomials. So we have R equals one minus square root two over two times one minus 
So we have one minus, let me just make that a little neater. Square root two over two. And now let's go ahead. We have r equals one times one is one. And then we have minus square root two over two. And then when we distribute this, so we just distributed these two, we're gonna distribute now, we're gonna have another minus square root two over two. And then we're gonna have at the end, we're gonna have plus square root two times square root two is two. And then we're over two times two is four. So from here, we could simplify, we have r equals, and this, just think of one as this is equal to four over four. So we have four over four plus two over four is six over four. And then we have minus two radical two over two because these fractions have common denominators. So I'm doing minus radical two minus radical two is minus two radical two. These terms cancel out like this. And this is gonna give us our final result. We have R equals, reduce this fraction, you get three over two. And then we have minus the square root of two. So this is the R value we need. And three over two minus radical two lines up with choice B.